director of the largest in vitro fertilization center in Fairfield County. Today you're going to be hearing all about the life stages of the human female. This is from preteen to menopause, and all I really want to know is, is it possible to slow down that process permanently? Anyway, you guys enjoy. Please welcome Dr. Mark Leandiris. Thank you very much for that kind introduction, and thank you guys for, for coming. I mean, I, when they asked me to talk at, here, I just thought it, it's actually very interesting to be a woman as a male physician who takes care of women, the fact that you transition through these five separate stages and they're fairly distinct is actually, it's very interesting, it's very confusing I think um, sometimes to women and the reality is, is that the role of women in our society to help the species survive is so important. And so our goal today is to better understand the, the processes as that, that girls transition into menopausal women and the important things to remember at each step. Um, I think you guys all have the handouts. So the very first page basically shows a young baby girl, a, a young woman, her mother, and her mother's mother. So. That, that is page, so it's page, and in that, we're representing every, basically every stage, except puberty. And so puberty is actually a, a multi-year process as well. But these distinct, every woman in that picture has a different hormonal makeup and has different things going on in their body that uh, sometimes causes them joy, sometimes causes them discomfort and, and emotional changes. I think one thing to understand is, is that the ovaries, um, which live in the female pelvis, right around the, the, your hip bones, um, those are fixed units and they're really just fancy egg sacs. So the ovaries are where the hormones come from. So women are born with about 350,000 eggs. And that egg pool, that, well, I'm on page three actually, that egg pool slowly degenerates over time. I think the most interesting thing to think about is that seven million eggs are placed in the gonad of the fetus at about five months inside a mother's uterus. And then, by the time birth has occurred, more than half of those have, have degenerated. And women only ovulate approximately 400 eggs their reproductive lifespan. So out of seven million to start off with, only 400 are ovulated and women typically have less than four children. So there's a lot of wastage on the female side when it comes to um, the egg pool, but the eggs are the precious special cells that actually make a new human being. Just to bear off for a second about the male system, sperm are very small DNA packets. They're like the, the key that turns on your car, but it's actually the egg that is the machinery and has all the pieces necessary for human beings to exist. And just a little bit of just high science, in the long run, the male genome is breaking down and they've figured out probably how to help women reproduce without needing men at all. It's probably gonna take about you know 100 years, but in general, the eggs are really an important part. And you wanna protect that egg pool, and we're gonna talk about that a little bit. So this decline in follicle number as women age is the biological clock that people talk about. So you can be as healthy as you want, you can exercise as much as you want, you can be as thin as you want. You're, every woman from 35 to 50 goes from fertile to subfertile to infertile. It's normal human biology. Menopause on average sets in at around age 51, 52, and the definition of menopause is no more menstrual periods or no more menstrual blood flow. So going on to uh, page four, if we talk about the stages for the human female, you have childhood, which is zero to 10 years of age. And you'll notice a lot of these ages overlap, but then you have puberty and adolescence, 10 to 25. I put 25 there because the reality is, is, is just having a menstrual period doesn't mean that you're a woman. There's actually a lot of psychological changes that go on up until the early 20s in, in women and actually a little bit later in men. And I think anybody here who is probably over 30 understands that they continue to mature. And 
We're going to talk about puberty and adolescence a little bit more, but it's our range. As far as reproductive ages, we're talking about 18 to 45. As far as premenopausal transition period, I think this is something that, that there's not a good word for yet. I've heard it called the, the perimenopause, which really isn't a good word. I've heard it called the climacteric, which really just sounds bad. Premenopausal transition period is, is the best we can do, I think, in saying it's a period of time where you're going from being having regular menstrual cycles to having being a menopausal woman. Um, as far as menopausal women, average age of menopause is, is 52, but some women continue having periods up until 60, so I put the menopausal woman age there greater than 60. As far as childhood, childhood is an essentially hormone-free stage. Anyone in this room who's had a little girl might have known, read, might have recognized when their daughter was born, the, there were some evidences of hormone action on her. Sometimes little breast buds, sometimes vaginal discharge, sometimes the labia look different because the, the effect of the pregnancy hormones actually starts some of the development of the external genitalia in, in infants. But that's pretty much all gone by the age of one. And from the age of one until the start of puberty, um, it's a hormone-free zone. And then sometime around the age of eight, nine, or 10, there's puberty starts. And it actually starts with a growth spurt. And then the next sign of puberty is usually the small lifting of the areola or the breast blood. But puberty is also a, probably a, somewhere around, to get from the start of the growth spurt to, to the start of the menstrual period is usually a period of about three to five years. It can be different in different women. And it's, it is true that young women are going through puberty sooner. And there's a few reasons for that. Nutritional status, some of maybe some foreign hormones in our environment. The other part of the story is, as, and we're all kind of aware, everybody talks about the obesity epidemic, but there is a body mass which women meet to be able to start puberty. So young girls who are more nutritionally fit, maybe heavier, are going to be apt to go into puberty sooner. Young girls who are very lean and very thin will go into puberty later. So the other thing I think that's, that's really important is to talk about in, in, in this childhood phase, you're setting the tone for the rest of your life. So putting healthy eating habits and dietary habits and exercise habits in place then is, is going to make a, a big difference as this woman with this young woman transitions. Slide number six is puberty and adolescence. And I put it in as uh, ages 10 to 20. And one of the uh, things in, that's in here is the beginning of the changing and raging hormones. I think that uh, um, anybody who's a mother of a teenage girl understands the, the conflicts that come up. And these conflicts are not um, made up. The, the hormonal changes in a pubertal adolescent women are a dramatic change, not only physically on their body, but psychologically on their brain. And, uh, and these are real changes, and I think it requires uh, excellent, excellent parenting skills not to respond to that um, in a negative fashion, but really to, to nurture that and understand that this is part of a normal transition for young, young women. When is, as far as puberty is concerned, it starts sometime around eight, progresses sometime to about 14, but what if a young girl gets a period before age eight? Is that abnormal? Yes. And if, if a young girl gets, gets her menstrual period before eight, that's something you want to pay attention to and you should see a doctor because you want to intervene. But more importantly, as parents of young girls, you want to look for the early